hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next adventure of The Shadow is in all his adventures, the news about his exploits are often known to the underworld almost as soon as they happen. And I want to tell you that the news about the new Goodrich Silvertown tire is traveling like wildfire among motorists all over America. It's because this new Silvertown is so sensational in action and appearance, it's really a new kind of tire. You've never seen anything like it. It even looks different. For its tread is wider and flatter, and every inch of the tread is covered with row upon row of never-ending spiral bars. And those spiral bars do the same job on a wet, slippery road as your windshield wiper does to your windshield. They sweep the water right and left. They force the water out through the deep drainage groove. Thanks to that lifesaver tread, your tire actually has a drier, safer road surface for the rubber to grip. Just think, motorist. Here is a tread that's actually a road dryer. No wonder the new Silvertown will stop you quicker and protect you against the dangers of skidding as never before. And here's a sincere and friendly tip. Don't fail to see and drive on the new Goodrich Silvertown the very first chance you get. Get a free demonstration. Take it from me, you'll get the driving thrill of a lifetime. And remember, only the new Silvertown offers you two great life-saving features. Lifesaver Tread Skid Protection and the famous Golden Ply Blowout Protection at no extra cost. The Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Using advanced methods that may ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to the underworld as the shadow. Never seen, only heard. As haunting to superstitious minds as a ghost. As inevitable as a guilty conscience. The shadow's true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, The Power of the Mind. on the mysterious disappearance of Professor John Hardy. He was last seen entering a black limousine and was accompanied by a heavy-set man wearing a Van Dyke beard and a tall, slender woman of foreign appearance. Secret service agents are reported investigating the case due to the importance attached to the professor's reported discovery of a new type explosive, more powerful than any known to munition makers in any country in the world. <laughs> Come in. Ah, come into my cabin, dear Countess Anna. Well, Richter, has your very stubborn and courageous American inventor Toff given you the formula for that high explosive he's so determined shall fall into no other hands save his own government? No, but he will. He can't stand much more of Ivan's treatment with the whip. Be careful. Too much torture can destroy the mind. And if Professor Hardy's mind snaps, you will never get the formula. Because we know for certain he has never written it down. I know, I know. I have warned Ivan to be careful. Mm, Ivan's idea of care is to see how close he can come to whipping a man to death without actually doing so. Why do you keep that big brute as a bodyguard? He has the mind of a child. In our business of espionage, Countess Zara, it is often useful to have servants who cannot think for themselves. Besides, Ivan is rather cunning in an animal sort of way. <laughs> 
Yeah, listen. I can't tell anymore. I can't. Don't. Don't be here. Yeah, did you hear that? Success at last, my dear Countess. I think Professor Hardy is ready to give us the formula. I'll tell you where I hid the gold. I found it, but I hid it. I found it at the end of the rainbow, and I hid it. <laughs> I hid it, <laughs> but I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> Richter, I warned you, his mind has snapped. Yeah, man, you fool. I told you to be careful. Give me that whip. I told you. I don't strike him hard. I don't... Oh, stop it. What good will it do you to beat Ivan? He doesn't even feel it. It's your fault. You should have watched him better. So you're telling me what to do, are you, Countess? It's about time someone did. You've certainly bungled this. Now how are you going to get the formula? The man's out of his mind. No amount of physical torture can make him tell us. <laughs> Take him back down to the hold of the ship, Ivan. I obey. Come, Professor. Come with me. It's at the end of the rainbow, the gold. I'll tell you. So, you've destroyed his mind. Good work. It's like having the formula in a sealed envelope and throwing it in the fire. Now what are you going to report to headquarters? Be quiet, Zara. I'm not finished. There's still a chance. Another way of getting his secret out of him. Even if his mind is gone. It may be an easier, surer way. Oh, why didn't I think of it before? What are you talking about? How can there be any other way with his mind destroyed by days and days of Ivan's fiendish torture with the whip? Sarah, it so happens that a fellow countryman of mine, Dr. Waldeck, one of the world's greatest psychiatrists, is in this country, right here in the city. And I suppose he'll gladly come down to the ship, the Star of Zealand, and get Professor Hardy's secret from him for you. <laughs> no, not... Gladly, perhaps, my dear Countess. But he will come. Just wait and see. I enjoyed your lecture very much, Dr. Waldeck. Our club has been honored tonight. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cranston. You are a scientist interested in psychiatry? Well, in a way, Dr. Waldeck, I'm really only an amateur criminologist. So, then perhaps you could tell me something of this remarkable man I've heard so much about. Even before I made this trip to America, a man called the Shadow. The Shadow? I'm afraid not, Doctor. No one knows very much about him. Have you heard? Oh, a great deal. I understand he is a master of mass hypnosis, of method suggestion. I hear he has you criminals and police quite baffled by his ability to appear in a room, a room crowded as, let us say, this club of yours and yet remain unseen. You seem to have no doubt of the shadow's existence, his powers, Doctor. Oh, none whatever, Mr. Cranston. In fact, I should like to meet this shadow. <laughs> Ah, but then I suppose I should have to commit some crime in order to do so, and I wouldn't care to carry my scientific research quite that far. I, I think the Shadow would enjoy meeting you, Doctor. You have much in common. I think you would be profoundly interested in your work in psychic research, particularly in the field of mental telepathy. You know, it might be interesting if you and the Shadow could make a test of thought transmission of a purely mental telepathic method. It would indeed. <laughs> Ah, this shadow, from what I hear, he has little time for theory. He deals mainly in the harsh realities of criminal investigation. Yes, but the two pursuits are not as far removed from each other as some persons seem to think. Message for Dr. Waldeck, Dr. Waldeck. Uh, right here, John. A message for you, Doctor. Here you are, Doctor. The gentleman and the lady are waiting outside in their car. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hmm. Well, that's unusual. Most unusual. Is there any answer, Doctor? Answer? Yes. Uh, say to the Countess I will come immediately. All right. I will do what I can. Uh, you will excuse me, Mr. Cranston. A country woman of mine is in need of help, and I must go at once. Uh, perhaps we will meet again. Well, goodbye. Come in. Come in. So, here you are, Lamont Cranston. I thought you promised to take me to dinner tonight. You're an hour late. I know. I'm terribly sorry, Margot. You're sorry. But Margot Lane, your assistant, is hungry. What's the matter, Lamont? You seem preoccupied. What's anything troubling you? Yes, Margaret, something is troubling me, but I'm blessed if I know what it is. Would it be Dr. Waldeck? 
Ever since you talked to him at the club last night, you've been wondering if he just suspected that you are the shadow. I don't think he knows, Margot. Then what are you worrying about? Simply that all day long I've had the feeling that Dr. Waldeck has been trying to get in touch with me, or rather, I should say, with the shadow. But how could Margo, he? Margot, Waldeck practiced what he preached. He is a master of mental telepathy. Well, a shadow isn't exactly a novice at mental telepathy either. What makes you think he's trying to get in touch with you? At intervals, all day, my mind has kept reverting to thoughts of distress, coupled with Waldeck's name. Waldeck's name and another name. Star of Zealand. That sounds like the name of a ship. Perhaps, but it, it doesn't make sense. Well, it seems to me it'd be easy to find out if Dr. Waldeck's in trouble. Why not call his hotel? I've been on the point of doing it several times, but... Here, give me that phone. Uh... Let me call him. A trouble... You, Lamont, you get so wrapped up in things like thought transmission. You get the, the obvious <laughs> telephone. That's why I have an efficient assistant like you. Hello? Will you connect me with Dr. Waldeck, sweet? What? Are you sure? The secretary's had no word either. No. no never mind. Thank you. Doesn't the hotel know where Waldeck is? No, he hasn't been seen or heard from since he left your club last night at 11 o'clock. Well, he is in trouble. He has been trying to communicate with me the, with the shadow. Lamont, that other name, Star of Zealand. Maybe he's been trying to let you know where he is. Yes, yes, now I'm sure of it. Star of Zealand. You said it sounded like the name of a ship. It's, it's just possible. Hand me that newspaper, Margo. I've got it here. Yeah, the shipping news. Let's see. Uh, here it is. Sailing, arrival, departures in port. Margo, there is such a ship in port, Star of Zealand. A freighter, General Cargo, Pier 83. Margo, is your car outside? Yes, you want me to drive you down to the dock? Yes, come on, there isn't a minute to lose. That ship is scheduled to sail at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And you think Dr. Waldeck is on board? Yes, and I'm just as certain he's in trouble and needs help. Help from the shadow. Just a couple more blocks, Margot. Wouldn't it be better to let the police investigate? You have so little to go on. You can't even be sure there is anything wrong. If I can't convince you, Margot, what chance do you think I'd have of persuading the police to board a tramp steamer and search it for a man not even reported missing? But how on earth would you search a ship without help? It would take hours. Well, it won't be necessary. I'll know if there's anything wrong if Waldeck's there. Five minutes after I've walked on the gangplank. But I'm going aboard as the shadow. We're nearly there. Slow down, stop by the next pier. I don't think you'd better wait, Margot. This is a tough section, and it's late. All the more reason for my waiting. Don't worry about me, Lamont. I'll lock the car doors. And, and another thing, if, if you're not back in 15 minutes... No, Margot, minutes, I... I may need more time, but keep the shortwave radio tuned in and our usual band. If you don't hear from me in half an hour, then go ahead and notify the police. All right, half an hour, but not a minute longer. I wish I knew what you were walking into, Lamont. I, I don't like this mental telepathy blind man's buff. Neither do I, Margot, but... During the ride down here, I've had a stronger feeling than I did at first that Dr. Waldeck is in desperate need of help. Stay in the car, Margot. Lock the doors and sit tight until I come back. Or you hear from the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with the shadow in a moment to find out what new spot his enemies have put him on. But first, here's a word of advice to every motorist. Don't let wet, skiddy pavement put you on the spot. Beware. How fast can you stop? Will your tires slip or grip? Don't gamble. And motorists, if there is one tire that has taken the gamble out of skidding, it's the new Goodrich Silvertown with the Lifesaver Tread. For exhaustive road tests of the regular and premium priced tires of America's six largest tire manufacturers, prove that the Silvertown gave greater skid resistance than any of the other tires tested. And don't forget, all during these tests, it was hands-off for good, rich engineers. Instead, these tests were conducted by absolutely impartial engineers from America's largest independent testing laboratory, the Pittsburgh Testing Laboratory. What's more, some of the tires the Silvertown was tested against have list prices of 40 to 70% more. And that can mean only one thing, motorists. No other tire, regardless of price, can give you the superior skid protection of the Lifesaver Tread. With Lifesaver Tread Silvertowns on your car, you'll stop quicker, safer on a wet pavement than you've ever stopped before. Just think, 
the quickest non-skid stops ever with the Lifesaver tread. Real blowout protection, too, with the famous Goodrich Golden Fly. And these two Goodrich safety features are now yours in the new Silver Town at no extra cost. Take a tip from me. For safety's sake, ride on Goodrich Safety Silver Town. My good Dr. Waldeck, what success have you had with our stubborn mental patient, eh? None, Victor. Come, come now, Doctor. You've been here on the Star of Zealand since last night? Not by my choice. I admit that. But surely you, one of the world's greatest psychiatrists, are not going to allow a deranged mind to stand between you and your chance of leaving this ship alive. It is impossible, I tell you. Only one thought dominates the mind of Professor Hardy. If you had not allowed your servant to immersively beat him, it would not be so difficult. I did not come down here to listen to excuses. I want that explosive formula from Professor Hardy. And I mean to get it. Now. Very well. He is there in the bunk, sleeping. Perhaps you could succeed where I have failed. You haven't failed. You haven't tried to penetrate his subconscious mind. But you're going to try. Devon, come here. Bring your whip. The whip failed you once, Victor. It will fail you again. You brought me here against my will. But neither you nor that brute and his whip can make me reveal the secret knowledge of that man's mind. A secret he sacrificed his reason to keep from you. Ah, we shall see if you have the same courage and determination as Professor Hardy. Evan. I am ready. Very well, Dr. Baldock. One last chance. Get Hardy out of that bunk. Question him. Use the method you so eloquently described at your lecture last night. The method used to penetrate the subconscious of amnesia victims. No, I refuse. The possession of Professor Hardy's formula, the formula of the most powerful explosive ever known, is vital to our country. Your country, Dr. Bollock. If you refuse, you are an enemy of your people. I am a man of science. My nationality was an accident of birth. You are a traitor. In your eyes, perhaps. Just as in mine, you are a common thief. Hold your tongue. They cheat. Do as you're told. And they coward. Ah, oh. hey, the whip. We'll see who is a coward. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Richter, the... the you didn't touch him. Uh, What's the matter with you? Why did you throw the whip uh, away? Something, something touched me. Knocked the whip from my hand. Uh, you're crazy. Uh, you dropped it. Get it. No, no I swear it. Something knocked it from my hand. Pick up that whip, I say. Pick it up. But, Mr. Richter, the whip, uh, it moves. Uh, it moves like a living thing, like a snake. Uh, oh, that is it, is it, Dr. Valdeck? Trying to save yourself by fogging Ivan's mind. Making him see by hypnotic trance. Whips move like snakes, sir. Well, I'll show you. I can use a whip, too. Stay where you are, Doctor. Or do you think you can stop me pulling the trigger of this gun? Your servant is not imagining things, Victor. He is not seeing things which have not happened. He is not hypnotized. Something knocked the whip from my hand. I swear, I swear. <laughs> oh, did, did you hear that? Laughter, laughter, like the laughter of Satan. There, uh, something, someone Please here. Please you, fool. Uh, you, you heard it too, you heard it. Yes, your master heard it. Ah, the shadow. You heard my appeal. You have come. The shadow. The shadow. Then it is possible. Telepathic communication between two minds, far removed, without mutual concentration of thought. Yes, Dr. Waldeck, a theory is being proved, but a fact remains. Is this another of your psychic tricks, Doctor? Richter, surely your activities in espionage have brought you in contact with those who have warned you against the shadow. The shadow? So you are the shadow. Waldeck got word to you, did he? Yes, but in a manner beyond your comprehension. Hey, man, get out, quick. Close the iron door. Don't open it again until I order it. Yes, Yes, I obey. Uh, your gun is trembling, Richter. Dr. Waldeck was right. You are a coward. At least I don't hide in shadows. So, you've come to save Dr. Waldeck here. I came here in answer to his call for help, but now that I'm here... Now that you're here, Shadow, you will remain. You have walked into a trap. A trap that will hold you until I am ready to deal with you in my own way. You and Waldeck and Professor Hardy there. You, Shadow... 
may even be useful in the event that the good doctor fails me. Hello? Hello? Captain, Richter speaking. Yes, sir. Order your crew to the post. Cut off. We said at once. But it is not six o'clock, sir. Obey my orders. We said at once. Yes, sir. As you command. Hey. Ivan, open the door. Don't waste your time in trying to get out of this hole here. Even you cannot walk through steel door, Shadow. In a few hours, we will be at sea, and you'll be beyond help. As for you, Dr. Waldeck, I advise you to enlist the aid of the Shadow in securing Professor Hardy's secret, if you value your life. Yes, come in. You are getting underway, Mr. Richter. Are there any further orders? Yes, Captain. As soon as we are at sea, I want half a dozen of your best men. Arm them with rifles and revolvers. Have them report here to me. Yes, sir. Why are we leaving so early? Oh, good morning, Captain. Oh, Countess. Beg your pardon, but have you been in your cabin? I haven't left it until now. Why? Why do you ask? What's wrong? I don't speak up, man. A young woman was seen coming on board just before we cast off, sir. What? what? Are you sure? Yes, sir. My second mate mentioned it, but thought it was Countess Zara. It couldn't have been. Captain, take every member of your crew you can get. Search the ship. Find that woman and bring her here. Yes, sir. We will find her if she is aboard. Margot Lane. Margot Lane. Notify police and coast guard. Notify police and coast guard. Professor John Hardin, Dr. Waldeck, prisoners in hold of Star of Zealand. Aboard Star of Zealand, proceeding to sea. Proceeding to sea. Repeat message. Margot Lane, repeat. Repeat message. Margot, Margot, repeat. Why don't you answer? Why don't you answer? Was that you talking, Shadow? Yes. I was calling my assistant for help on my portable radio, but something's wrong. I... I can't get an answer. I am profoundly sorry for the situation in which we find ourselves. Had I been able to communicate to you the exact nature of my difficulties, you would have been prepared. I am prepared, Doctor. This ship will never pass beyond the three-mile limit. It will be stopped search. But how? I'm going to use this radio again. Star of Zealand. Star of Zealand calling the Coast Guard. Star of Zealand calling the Coast Guard. Go ahead, Star of Zealand. Go ahead. Professor John Hardy, missing scientist, wanted by the Secret Service, prisoner aspiring aboard Star of Zealand, proceeding down bay, stop and search, stop and search, prepared for armed resistance, that is all. Okay, Star of Zealand, a Coast Guard cutter will investigate immediately. You are indeed prepared, Shadow, but do not underestimate the cunning of Richter. At the first sign of danger, he will attempt to dispose of Professor Hardy and myself and you. We must be prepared for that. Professor Hardy's mind completely gone? No. For the past 24 hours I have been treating him, have induced hypnotic sleep. He should be nearly rational now. Then awaken him. No time to lose. Very well. Professor Hardy. Come, Professor Hardy. It is time to waken. It is time to waken, Shadow. Professor Hardy. Margo. Come, Professor Why did you leave the car? Aboard the ship. I called you but received no reply. When the ship sailed ahead of schedule, I was sure something gone wrong. Someone must have seen me coming aboard there searching the ship. You're a godsend, Marco, but you mustn't be found on the ship. A Coast Guard cutter's on the way. You've got to get off before they arrive. Don't worry about me. We're passing down the channel. It's only a couple of hundred yards to shore. Oh. Why, Dr. Waldeck is here. He was aboard. But who's that other man? Professor John Hardy. But quick, Margot, get off the ship. You've done more than enough just opening the steel door. All right, Shadow. Don't worry, I can swim ten times that distance. There's a cargo door open on the port side. Guy far out, Margot. And Margot, be careful of the suction of the propellers. Good luck. Come, Professor Hardy. Come, Professor Hardy. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. But, oh, what has happened? Where is this? Richter. We are still on the ship, uh, but help is coming. He is uh, very weak, Shadow. Shadow, uh, the door, uh, it is open, but uh, how? Uh, Don't stop until you find that uh, uh, All right, you must come with me. Uh, the door, uh, it is open. They uh, have escaped. Doctor, what? get back behind the door, out of sight. Hey, that girl, she opened it. But they can't get off the ship. They can't be far from here. Maybe they hide. Maybe they hide. Ivan, you fool! 
Why did you oh, close that door? Well, I, I did not. I did not touch it. <laughs> now, Richter, it is you who have walked into a trap. So you didn't have time to get away, Shadow. Mr. Richter, the doctor, the professor, they are here. Yeah, so you like to have what you Americans call the showdown. Very well, you shall have it. After I communicate with my captain. Captain? Captain? Yes, sir. Quick. Your men who are searching the ship, send them to this hold at once. Immediately, sir. And uh, now, Shadow, we shall deal with you. Ivan, watch the good doctor and the professor. Their turn will come when we have finished with this shadow once and for all. <laughs> you are too late, Richter. Listen. There. Yeah. So, the river police. Well, let them come. Before they can board us, there will be no trace of any of you. Perhaps your captain is not so sure. He's calling you over the speaking tube. Sure. Hello, hello. Coast Guard cutter off our port bow, sir. She has radioed us to hold for search. Order full speed ahead and get your men down here. But Quick. we are not beyond the three-mile limit. Carry out my orders. Full speed ahead. Yes, sir. Desperate measures, but they will fail, Richter. They will fail. That was a blank, a warning. <laughs> Your captain is being sensible. He stopped the engines. Uh, let them come. Let them search the ship. They'll find nothing. Nothing. Because I'm going to shoot you. They'll never think to look for bodies in the ballast tanks. My gun! No. No, Richter. You are not going to add murder to your list of crimes. Be one, quick! I've got hold of the shadow here. Take my gun. It's on the floor. The shadow's here between me and the wall. Shoot him. No. No. Oh, there is nothing there. I see nothing. Shoot him! You are mad! Shoot You're him! You are mad, I go! Dr. Waldeck, Dr. Waldeck, the gun! Pick it up! Yeah. Put up your hands, Victor. No, you don't! You'll never turn me over to the police! No. Sorry, I had to hit Richter so hard, Dr. Waldeck. The Coast Guard won't meet much resistance when they arrest him. You are a witness to what has happened here. Oh, Listen, Doctor. I'm fighting the asylum dealer! We are coming aboard! The Coast Guard! Yes, they are coming aboard. You are safe now, Dr. Waldeck. Your faith in the power of the mind saved you and Professor Hardy. Helped him keep his secret. Perhaps at some future time, under more favorable circumstances, we shall meet again. <laughs> You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. <laughs>